Is there big change needed at the top in order for the Baltimore Ravens to reach ultimate, to reach that true success in not only getting to a Super Bowl, but winning another one? Well, that seems to be the topic that's on a lot of Ravens fans' mind. And in today's episode, special episode of questions from subscribers, we are going to get into just that. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video uh, because it helps out a whole lot now uh first question or questions they came from terry he said is it time for a change of scenery what's up engraving hope you and the family are doing well and i pray that god continues to bless you guys every step of the way appreciate it terry he said this question is a very long one so if you read this i thank you okay here we go 2018 ravens lose the charges in the afc wildcard game we went almost three quarters without scoring the ball granted rookie quarterback lamar jackson was under center so there was a guarantee to have some struggles in this game. 2019, Ravens are the first seed, have a home divisional game at the bank, but the offense hasn't clicked for a second straight year in the postseason, only run the ball a few times despite being the number one total rushing offense in the NFL. Uh, 2020, Lamar wins his first playoff game with not only a stellar passing game but rushing as well against the Titans. However, the divisional game before Lamar goes down, the Ravens don't score a touchdown until the fourth quarter. If you see where I'm going now, let team keep it clean. No. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't need to let them know anything. They already know. But it's at 2021. Uh, despite losing Lamar Jackson and half of our team being decimated to injuries, if the Ravens beat the Steelers in Week 17, we're in the playoffs. Ravens go into overtime against a good team but lose while the offense could only put up 13 points with terrible play calling in the defense, only holding the Steelers to 16 points. 2022, no Lamar, no problem. We score a touchdown, we're good. We fumbled the ball at the one-yard line. Tyler Huntley jumped over when we could have ran with either J.K. or Gus. 2023, we beat the Texans and run the ball great. Against the Chiefs, we only run the ball a few times. Even with holding the Chiefs to just 17 points and a score of the second half, we couldn't get the job done offensively. If you understand what I was trying to prove here, it's that the defense is by far our smallest problem when it comes to the playoffs. That's true. They've been, for the most part, they've been doing their thing. Uh, it's sadly the offense. Every year we continue to beat ourselves. So I ask you this. Is it time for a new change of scenery and give the keys to ooh, the timing of this question? So it obviously happened before everything went down. His question was, is it time for a new change of scenery and give the keys to Mike McDonald as our head coach? Ooh, I wish that could have happened. I really do. Because I felt like it would have been a breath of fresh air while still doing things that you've done great already, but improving the things that you don't do so great in some other areas. But that's that. He said, no disrespect to Hards, but I think the team needs something new and to hold guys accountable. Yeah, it ain't no disrespect to Hobbs at all. Um, a change of scenery is not always a bad thing. I know so many Ravens fans look at uh, when, when if, if you talk about the possibility of the Ravens Obviously, it's not going to happen anymore, but it, the possibility of the Baltimore Ravens moving on from John Harbaugh. We know it's not going to happen. It's only going to happen on his terms whenever he feels like he wants to step down. But whenever you talk about it, a lot of Ravens fans say, like, oh, well, who would be better? Well, who would you rather have in place of him? Who's going to come in and do a better job than John Harbaugh? Well, you got options of guys, but. And then people will also say, well, hey, John Harbaugh goes and he'll get picked up in two seconds. That's, he, that's true. He will get hired for sure. It's coaches that get fired from one job and they get another job like that. It's coaches that leave the NFL and they'll come back and they'll get a job like that. They'll have their options. Of course, he'll get hired. But a change of scenery could be beneficial for sure for both parties. It could be beneficial for the Baltimore Ravens because it's something that's obviously not clicking. Something that's not clicking. But then on John Harbaugh's side, he could go over and have success somewhere else. And he'd be like, okay, cool, great. Look at Andy Reid. Andy Reid would... He was killing it to a point, to an extent, with the Philadelphia Eagles. NFC Championship, NFC Championship, NFC Championship, Super Bowl. But he just could not get over the hump. Couldn't do it. What happened? He left, went to the Chiefs, and boom, now look at him. Regarded as one of the best coaches of all time. Look at it. Just, just from change of scenery. And the Philadelphia Eagles, they end up winning the Super Bowl after he left. He ended up winning the Super Bowl. Both parties end up winning Super Bowls after they broke up. It's a real possibility that both parties can have success after the breakup, and that would be just fine. Oh, man, we started talking, and I forgot to read the rest of what he said. He said, thank you for everything, Greg, and I've been watching you since the sixth grade, and now I'm a freshman in college. 
<laughs> and that's crazy. I appreciate that, man. The thing keep it clean. Appreciate your consistency and hard work. I appreciate that a lot, man. Thank you, man. Next question came from my guy TJ. He said it's time for a change. I hate to do this to Team Keep It Clean, but it's time for a change. I'm tired of hardball laying down for Andy Reid. I'm tired of NFL rigging these games, and when we watch the players go along with the plan. There's no way that we lost that game, and it's a shame as a Ravens fan to see this keep happening. I'm retiring as a Ravens fan after seeing them sell out the way that they did and how rigged the NFL is. Hashtag TJ out. Now let me ask you a question. Are you going to come out of retirement uh, later on in the offseason? They make a couple nice moves and whatnot. And I get the frustration. Trust, trust me. <laughs> trust me. We all get it. So we ain't mad at you. But we'll, we'll see in a couple months, my friend. The Ravens made a huge mistake. Next question came from my guy, Sean G. He said, hey, great. Hope all is well with you and the fam are doing well. Appreciate it, Sean. Uh, I think the Ravens have made a huge mistake. Mike McDonald got hired by the Seahawks, and I believe the Ravens should have kept him and made him our head coach. I've been saying this since after last season, and Hotball has taken us as far as he can. But after the success we had, we had this year, I kept quiet. Now that the season is over, I believe the Ravens were wrong in letting Mike McDonald go. McDonald has shown to be able to make adjustments during games, even though he was only the defensive coordinator of the team. While I have a lot of respect for what Harbaugh has done for the Ravens, he still makes mistakes during games that I believe we should have won. This past game against the Chiefs, we only ran the ball six times. Um... With our running backs, and that is one of his many wrongdoings as a head coach. We were the best running team in the league, yet when we get to the playoffs, we want to start throwing the ball all over the place. The week before against the Texans, Lamar had 100 yards rushing alone. McDonald will be a success with the Seahawks. Not sure Ravens know what they have truly lost in McDonald. Sorry for the long message, but I feel like I had to say this. No, you don't got to apologize for nothing. And yeah, you, 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 you were more than right in saying that. Um, got no problem with that. And I agree. I, I, I do think, again, breath of fresh air would have been just fine. Just going in a slightly different direction would have been just fine. But that's what's scary about the Baltimore Ravens right now. And again, it's all love for John Harbaugh. You already know that. But it just feels like something, like, they seem to be stuck. They, they seem to be stuck in this spot to where they just, the biggest moments, they fall apart. And they don't know who they are. They forget who they are. They forget what got them there. Well, defense don't forget nothing, but offense, they forget what got them there. And people just tired of the same thing happening. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, so Mike, Mike, Mike Mack has left Charm City. Uh, these Ravens are in desperate need of a change in leadership. As we have discussed in the past, Eric Bieniemy is available and would definitely be an upgrade at head coach. Uh, Hoodie may be a great option as well. And was it goes there has to be a sense of urgency moving forward the past season was fun but with different leadership and accountability there could have been possibly a different outcome uh, thanks again and great for the channel been watching for a few years and continuously enjoy all the content appreciate it he said hashtag team keep clean hashtag run the ball um i don't see the ravens moving off of john harbaugh for eric b enemy um and with bill belichick oh man what what happened with him that was uh he didn't even get a job that's crazy so would he be willing to be like an assistant? Like, I, hey, I wouldn't mind if the Ravens brought both of them on because they both got a lot of Super Bowl experience. Um, if they found the role for, because you know Baltimore Ravens, that's one thing they know how to do. They know how to create some roles. They know how to create some jobs, man. So if the Baltimore Ravens could bring them on for something, figure out something with both of those two, uh, I, I wouldn't be mad at all. Uh, but I, it probably ain't going to happen. But hey, you know what? I, I can't say that. Especially with Eric Bieniemy, with Bill Belichick, probably not. But with Eric Bieniemy, they they may be able to create something for him just to put him on, and then put him as like a a role of assistant here, assistant there, the director of this, or the head of that, and and then just watch him move up in the ranks. And then hey, you never know. But anyway, his next question was uh, after watching this AFC Championship game. My question is this: Is the Ravens are the Ravens a better team without Mark Andrews? Oh, oh, he got a couple of questions in here. Um, I can't say they are a better team without Mark Andrews because Mark Andrews is one of them guys. But they they have an issue to where it's all or nothing. I mean, no, it's one or nothing. It can never be all. And what I mean when I say that is with the tight ends. If Isaiah Likely is going off, Mark Andrews, he can't go off. If Mark Andrews is going off, Isaiah Likely can't go off. But if one of them is playing, great. But if both of them are playing, it's like they both are ineffective. They, they, they have a problem where they can't get both of them going. It just it never happens. It's weird, but it, it just never happens. So 
Anyway, he said, uh, also, what happened to the best running game in the NFL? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When is EDC going to see that Harbaugh has been holding his team back from truly becoming a consistent contender? Now, uh-uh, I, I disagree with that part. Harbaugh has them as a contender. They've been a contender, especially when they've been healthy. It's just that when they get to the biggest point in the biggest games, they just decide, you know what, we're going to make it a, a 10 times harder for us to contend with this other team than it needs to be. Uh, Mike McDonald, had, oh, yeah, see the timing of these. Oh, th he sent this on January 28th. Watch this. He said Mike McDonald has to take over the head coach job. Ravens can't afford to lose him due to complacency. Uh, hey, yo. <laughs> and Raven, we've been talking about this for years and still through coordinator after coordinator, nothing has been solved. Got to focus on the true problem and deal with it. Thanks for all the great content throughout the season and all the past seasons as well. So you saw the, the what, how he recognized what the issue has been. And he, he realized it before, before Mike McDonald even left. He was talking about it. But anyway, he also said, these Ravens have a lot of hard decisions to make with this roster. Coaches and players alike are going to be cut. Go somewhere else or be resigned. Who do you think is the biggest need to sign player for this Ravens team? Biggest need to sign player for this Ravens team that's going to be a free agent? I'd say probably Matt Abike. Matt Abike. Um, getting that interior pressure, it just <coughs> it makes life easier for Ravens as a whole. He said, who do you think won't be here for next season? Um, Patrick Queen and Geno Stone, too. And he said, and what is the biggest need for the Ravens in the draft? Uh, offensive line. Um, offensive line and just players that – I was just talking to my guy JT about this the other day, he, and he brought up a good point. I was like, I didn't even think about that. But players that can be healthy, players that are not injury prone because that's so big. That's so big. Just to be available is huge. So that would be it. Um, and he said uh, – Injury play, left tackle needs to be addressed. Ronnie is solid when he is healthy, but the loss hurts, but the Ravens will be back. So, okay, yeah, I guess I should have read the rest of his question because he literally said exactly uh, what I said as well. Therapy. Next question came from my guy Oreo Cookie. He said, hey there, Engraven, I'm having a delay, de delayed reaction and really feeling it. I feel like a Cowboys fan with being lied to and cheated. At least in 2019, there was the youth excuse. So 2020 and 2022, there was Lamar being hurt. What's the excuse this year? Um, there is none. There's none. Ravens were clearly the best team in the league. Best team in the league. Even a Super Bowl champion came off came off and said that after winning the Super Bowl, he still said the Ravens were the best team in the league. Best one, because they were. We knew that. Everybody knew that. But yeah, you know the rest of the story. He said, "Sorry, one more question. Are we going to be the Cowboys and make no changes or even consider changes to personnel, or are we?" Um. Well, personnel, coaching staff, I mean, it's always changes every year with a football team. Uh, no matter how much you try to keep them the same, there's always going to be some kind of changes, whether major or minor. With the Baltimore Ravens, this offseason, so far it's been a bit of both. Been some major changes, and there will be some more minor changes as well. And some other major changes, too, because you can't keep all them players. You got a lot of free agents, a lot of pending free agents. Some you're going to keep, some you're going to retain, but a lot are going to go. So it's going to be up to you to retool, replace. And get this thing right again. What now? Next question came from my guy Anthony. He said, we lost. It sucks. But we are fans no matter what. Uh, we stopped running the ball. We'll never, we never even started. Uh, just shot ourselves in the foot. So what now? Engraving what needs to be done. And as always, God bless and trust. So what now? That, that, that's a great question. What now? What's it going to be to help these Ravens move forward positively and get over this hump? Well, I, you know what? It's like we, 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 we've had the same conversation for a while now. Um, just hoping that the Ravens would realize like, hey, why we keep making this harder? Why, why, why do we keep making stuff more difficult? But they keep doing it. And I mean, if something keeps happening over and over and over, you got to look at the root cause of it all. This question came from my guy, Javo. He said, I had a feeling that we were going to lose when everyone started jumping on the Ravens podcast. Uh, once again, the defense played great, but the offense was stagnant. The only receiver who came to play was Zay Flowers, and the offensive line forgot how to block. Why didn't we see Dalvin Cook? We need to – I forget about that a lot, too. I mean, we didn't even see the starting running back, so couldn't even imagine seeing him. I, I completely forget about that. I, I forgot that he was even on the team, really. Because, um, yeah, he – yeah, I completely forgot. Uh, but anyway, he said, we need to invest in uh, a lineman to replace Ronnie Stanley, a true wide receiver, a lockdown cornerback, and possibly, <laughs> he said, and possibly a new head coach. What do you think? Hey, getting all those things would have been great, but um, 
I can't say they're not all, all going to happen. It would be great to knock down all of those all in one off season. But obviously they're not going to get a new head coach this off season. How about like we continue to say he ain't going nowhere. He ain't going nowhere. He's not going to get fired. He ain't get, he ain't going nowhere. Um, but as far as a, a true wide receiver, yeah, I mean, you got some guys like that already, but again, it's a matter of just making it happen. Like Rashad Bateman, he, he be getting open a lot. They just got to get that connection down. They, 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 look, him and Lamar just, um, they ain't on the same page. They, they got to get on the same page. They ain't there yet. Um, so with a, another, a, a lockdown cornerback, you got Brandon Stevens already. Uh, invest a lineman to replace Ronnie Stanley. Um, well, yeah, I think you got to do that regardless. So actually, maybe they can hit on a lot of this stuff this off season. So that's really up to uh, EDC and them to make it happen. He also said, to be fair, I don't really mind if PQ leaves because Trent Simpson can do a lot more as far as coverage and his speed coming off the edges with blitzes. Our main focus should be JM Justin Matabike and maybe reconstructing Marlo, Ronnie, and Marcus contracts to bring in a true receiver or invest in the offensive line. We have some young studs like Tavarius Robinson. I can't call him a stud yet, but we'll see. Uh, and a Jabo, if healthy, who can help the pass rush. See, the fact that you got to put that part, that's scary. Because it's been, what was last year, his second season, I think. And I know his first season was a wash pretty much because he was hurt. But it happened again. He got hurt again. So now it's like, oof. Now do you put all your eggs into the Ajabo basket? I don't think you can. And then you got Tyus Bowser, who was out all year. They'll probably release him. So, it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah. He said we should also be focusing on. Oh man, see, I love looking back at some of these questions because the timing. This is on January thirtieth, obviously before it was official. He said we should also be focused on keeping McDonald and maybe offering him a head coach position and give John a different role. What are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, you see, a lot of people was on the same page with that. He was on the same page with that. He said, also, we should try and draft uh, Keon Coleman, a receiver from FSU. I've been hearing his name a whole lot. Java also said, I've been listening to a lot of an analysis, and they say that Lamar Jackson didn't play like Lamar Jackson versus the Chiefs. They say Lamar played like he was trying to prove people wrong and that he can stay in the pocket. Uh, I have noticed a lot of times um, – Lamar will hold on to the ball too long instead of running with the ball like he did versus the Texans. What are your thoughts on that? And do you agree with Rex Ryan as he said the game plan sucked heading into this game and that we should apologize to Greg Roman because he would at least maintain the running game un unlike Todd. You sure about that? We, we forget about 2019? Did 2019 that happen? Like, did, 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 did that season just get erased from our minds and our memories and did it just not go down? Because literally the exact same thing happened. Exact same thing. But um uh with that with um I now I done lost my tra my whole train of thought. Um Well with Lamar not playing like himself, that's what it was. I had to go back and reread it again. Yeah, um sometimes it can't seem like that. Like Lamar is playing like, oh, I'ma prove these people that I could do this. And it's like we well, already know you could do that. People already know you can do that. My thing is, like, with Lamar, is we know everything that you could do. While, while pe even people who doubt you and hate on you and say this and all that, they know and they've seen what you can do. They, they know it. So, hey, just play winning football. That's it. Win. That's it. You got to do, do what you got to do to win. That's it. You got to prove nothing to nobody. You, you got your contract. You got your MVPs. You got your all pros. You, you, you break a new record every other week. You got all that stuff. Just win. Keep winning. Keep, what are they going to say if you keep winning? That, that's all you need to prove, that you you a winner at football. That's it. And we're proving that in the regular season. All right, cool. Now it's time for, to take it up a notch in the post. So that's it. Play winning football and get it done. This thing's next question came from my guy Ray Sean. He said, "What's up, team? Keep it clean. I gotta say, this playoff hurts more than any other playoff loss. Worse than 2019. You sure? Worse than 2011? Uh, I don't. It ain't. It ain't touching 2011 to me. It's really not. It sucks the situation. Obviously, the, the it's AFC Championship and the Ravens were right there, best team in the league. They got, oh, but I think 2019 was worse. I mean, excuse me. Sorry, sorry. 2011." That was worse, in my opinion, because Ravens were in the game all game. They weren't getting bullied. They weren't playing scared. They weren't just, no, they, 
they weren't not playing their game. They were in the game all game. And then at the very end, again, you just knew, oh, they're going to overtime? Yeah, Ravens got it. And the kick, and a kick that you just knew was going in. Oh, yeah, we got that. Nope. And that ended the game. Now, this game hurt for sure, but it, it, to me it didn't hurt as much as 2011 did because, yeah, they were just different back then. But what was so different about that 2011? We'll talk about that another time. Anyway, he said it. Um, more specifically, the performance of my dude, Lamar. It sucks because now we have to go a whole nother year of listening to people say Lamar can't play well in the postseason. He chokes in the postseason. He may never win the Super Bowl. I can't defend his performance versus the Chiefs because, honestly, it didn't seem like he wanted to win. He didn't play like he wanted to win. He refused to put on that Superman cape at the half. He should have been like, this is going to be me and Zay. If Zay's not open, I'm running for it because I don't have to dance around and wait for someone to get open. I'm tired of hearing what this man cannot do because the man can do it all. What could the haters or media say if he won? Funny, timing is everything. Timing is everything. We were just talking about that in the previous question that just got to play winning football. Now, I can't say he didn't play like he didn't want to win because there was one point where Lamar Jackson, was he, he threw the ball and he ended up catching it himself and running for a chunk of yards on that play. So I'm like, oh, I was, I was like, hey, Lamar said I'm going to do it myself. But um, everything just, it, it, it stopped and... Something something to think about. Um, and Lamar obviously had no control of this. Remember, he, he threw the big play to Zay Flowers. Uh, threw the big play to Zay Flowers. And then once he threw that ball, Zay Flowers caught it. They were in the red zone. But then Lamar threw a touchdown ball to Zay Flowers. He threw another touchdown. But Zay fumbled it. Fumbled it right at the goal line. That was a touchdown. Zay could have ran it in. He could have covered it up and just ran it in. He didn't even have to dive. I get why he was trying to die, because he was pressing. He was pressing because Raven needed to score. But he fumbled right there. And then, uh, yeah, Lamar with the uh, the interception. A bad throw. Again, should have been pass interference, but it was still a bad decision. That don't take away from it being a bad decision. But, it, again, it should have been pass interference. So should have wiped off that bad decision. Should have canceled it out. Should have been offsetting decisions. But, yeah. Um... So anyway, continuing, he said, where were the mentors saying, hey, Lamar, put that cape on and just go do your thing? Uh, where were the coaches saying, hey, we're only down 10. Don't force anything if nothing's there. Run or settle for the field goal. Um, settle for the field goal because our defense will get us the ball back. I'm just tired of hearing the same stuff when it comes to Lamar and the Ravens because I won a Super Bowl badly for both. Anyway, sorry for the rant. Let's go. Oh, yeah, he said, let's go 49ers. We, all in. Yeah, we saw how that went. But um, yeah, it's uh, it was unfortunate, man. And now, yeah, now we're here, so we'll see how this thing goes moving forward, and just hope that moving forward in the next playoff game, Ravens they play who they are, they play they 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 play to their identity, and they don't forget what got them there. 